Okay guys, back again. Starting off uh, where we left off. This is what you, well, <laughs> this is what happened, okay? You dumped all your packages um, into your sources directory that you created on your uh, ext3 partition, okay? In the last tutorial. Um, we're gonna start on page 80 or 39. As a good measure, let's make sure that our LFS variable stuck or is, is sticking. You might need to do that uh, quite often to make sure that your pathway is linked up correctly. If not, uh, you could be building packages where you're not supposed to, and you get a lot of problems out of it. And this will be a long build, so you, you don't want any problems. You know, it's I've done at least 20 of them so far. Four of them were successes, and and 20 plus were failures. You know, so you, it's easy to fail, very easy to fail. All right. So um, on page 41, it talks about using uh, adding the LFS user. Um, we need to do that. And where do we have to be? You can be anywhere you want to within the on the live CD. So we'll say group add um, LFS adding a group LFS and we're going to say user <coughs> user add s for uh, bin bash that gives the user bin bash capabilities since we'll be using bash to do a lot of this that's what we're going to do group LFS M for make, I think, I'm not sure. K, uh, dev, null, LFS, LFS. Okay. Now we have a user in our LFS group. And now we need to change the passwords of that user to something we know. And that's what I'll do now. Now, <coughs> we have an LFS user, and we need to uh, give that user permissions over the two folders that we created um, in our uh, file system. Okay, so if we say chone, uh, that's change owner, for both LFS, let's say LFS tools. So we're changing the ownership of the tools directory to the new user we just created. That's done. And we also need to change the ownership of the sources folder to that new user as well. Okay. If you don't change the permissions, you have a ton of problems with permission issues. So that's uh, that's what you need to do. Follow the book to the T. Don't deviate. And you'll have no problems. Um, <laughs> my 20 fails were because of, you know, I, I, I thought I, you know, knew what I was doing, and no, nah, I didn't, okay, you need to follow the book correctly, and I'll get into uh, some other issues that may cause some conflicts um, later on, but we're going to continue and say, we need to go in, um, sue LFS, we need to become root in our new user we just created, okay, now you can notice a little, a couple things here have changed, Okay, that's okay. Um, we're using uh, our new user now as root, as a root, not the root, but a root. Um, we need to create our environment, and by doing that, we're going to cat into um, our bash profile EOF some standard conventions about what's going on here. Uh, we don't have a text editor. We don't have Vi. We don't have Vim, Nano. Of course we don't have Gedit. But we don't have a text editor. So we can't actually create files yet without um, a text editor. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're using cat. Cat normally um, cats out a file or list a file or shows you what's in a file or you can read a text file through cat but we're flipping cat around 
so we're actually catting into so it's like we're writing into um, this file here which is our mesh profile we need to set up this uh, environment variable environment variable here for reasons that are discussed better in the book okay so now we have that end let me say this here EOF is end of file we put it in quotes here now when we get done if we type in EOF at the end which we will do um, that's uh, pretty much completing the cat or completing the write or if you're using text editor that's like saying save quit okay so that's what we're gonna do starting back up we'll say exe env environment i home equals dollar sign home term equals dollar sign term and say ps1 equal to um, u w that okay with bash okay eof writes it okay okay that's done also too we need to cat into or we need to write into um, our bash rc file and once again we'll declare that eof means uh, end of file and we'll say set h you say you mask 22 saying lfs equals mount lfs which looks familiar because that was our exported variable that we did in the previous uh, maybe two tutorials ago okay that was temporary and this is a uh, permanent so we need to do that see all equals POSIX set up this path here which is tools bin mm, bin user bin take it easy read things quite often um, I used to I, I like to use markers okay um, when looking back and forth I see the X is over top of this here if this was uh, you know if this was screwed up a little bit well naturally you would uh, if you use the X as a marker and it's not the same in the book this is going to create issues this blank space here you know so and we don't want any issues because we want this to go nice because it's going to take us a long time okay so after that's all done let's go back to the end over here and say export LFS LC underscore all path okay and EOF to write it okay that's done now we're going to source that profile or we're going to um uh, uh, Intelize the profile that we just put in, or we're going to use what we just put in. Okay, so that's what we type in. Push enter. Let that go through for a second. Source it, and now we're signed in as the LFS user. If I type in who am I, enter. I am the LFS user now. Okay, no longer root. I need to be the LFS user. Off the live CD, um, you you are root. I'm not root anymore because I don't need to be root right now because the book tells me I don't <laughs> okay so um, you can see we're here if we go back up one this is the LFS home directory okay you you are a user you are a user okay and everything else has changed okay everything else looks different but it's still the same spiel okay so um, check and make sure that our environment or our uh, pathways to the same okay so we'll echo out LFS that's fine that's what we need it looks good and what we're going to do is we're going to CD into the LFS sources directory okay now here let's see if I can back this up a little bit all these here are all the packages that you copied over from the boot CD or the packages that you acquired um, you know GNU.org uh, it's got a lot 
of these packages here. Okay, since I'm using the boot CD, I don't need to go get any packages. They already come on the uh, CD. Just have to copy them. Okay, makes life a lot easier. A lot easier, left, less interesting. And in uh, earlier Linux from scratches, uh, the uh, some of the packages aren't even there anymore. So I want to do LFS. Uh, I think one. And I can't do LFS one because I can't find uh, probably like five of the five of the fifty packages. So, <clears throat> but we'll get into that. This is where we are, and standard convention for building anything. We're going to start with bin utils. We need to build bin utils first. Um, it's recommended though that um, when you're building uh, your your packages that you build them, you build some of them, like bin utils and GCC and glibc, you build those in a directory where you're at. So uh, this standard convention is we're going to use tar, okay, tar xvf, okay, which is extract verbose for, you know, show, and file, okay, and we want to type in bin, I'm going to hit tab, hope you got tab completion everybody in here doesn't have tab completion so use your tab switches all right um makes life a lot easier you don't have to type everything out okay so that's the command i'm gonna let run now i'll let it go ahead right now it's um if you look back when you when you got the packages and moved them they were all zipped up and tarred up and everything else so right now you're untarring all those packages and that's what it's going to do. Bin utils isn't going to take very long. After we get done untarring this, uh, we have to go into the extracted folder, and from within there, we will make another folder that will, we will call a, a build folder. And inside of there, that's that's where um, everything goes down. Okay. So let's clear this up now. Like I said, I extracted the bin utils. Now I want to CD into bin utils. Hit the tab switch. As you can see here, this bin utils is a little different. It doesn't have the tar, um, you know, uh, suffix and everything else at the end. Okay, so we're in it now. And we'll say clear. That's where we need to be. This is everything inside of bin utils. Now um, we need to create a folder according to the book. You want to follow the book because if not, you're going to be lost. Create a folder outside of this directory that we just extracted. We're going to name it bin utils. We're going to call it build. Okay. Now we want to cd into that build directory that we just created. Bin utils. Let's say build. Clear. And we list. Nothing's in it. Okay. That's fine. Now from within this build directory, I'm going to type in this, bin utils 2.16, and we'll say configure um, prefix equal tools, okay, and we shrink it up a little bit, and we say dash dash disable, disable nls. Okay, and we hit enter. Right now, it's uh, configuring our bin utils to get ready to make the package. Okay, let that do its thing. It's not too long on this one. That's fine. Clear. We can list now, and we see that we have, um, you know, we have our make file and everything else. Everything's ready to go. The reason why we build it outside of that directory is there's a lot of uh, files within the other directory, and um, some commitment commands may make other different things that we don't want to make right now. The standard convention is with this bin utils, this is the first pass of bin utils. Okay. Um, bin utils, GCC, there's like three different passes. What happens is, is, is it makes certain parts of the um, of the utility as far as bin utils goes to utility. So it makes certain components of the utility and then you may have to go and make certain test packages okay and then after you have those test packages installed 
you're going to test the new bin utils. Okay. It's um it's a process. It's a process. This is pass one on bin utils. Okay, I think there's two or maybe three on bin utils, but it's a uh, it's a process. It's not all going to be done at one time. Okay? So it sounds like I got somebody being murdered outside or something. So now that that's done we configured our packages, it's ready for the make um, convention is to say make you could hit enter now or if you add and two and signs there, hope you can see that and make install, you can combine two commands um, which is a little faster for you okay but you gotta know which way you're going here don't uh, you know don't make and make install when you're really not supposed to but as far as I'm doing, I'm on page uh, 49, and I see, you know, make, and then the next command is make install. St instead of doing two commands, I just combine them into one. If you don't use the double and um, notation, it'll make the first one. For instance, here, it'll make this, and it'll fail to make the install, okay? And you don't want to fail to make the install. So, this is all case sensitive follow this exactly how it is here okay so we'll say make and make install and it's gonna go through its things now and this will take a little while um, why you see this uh, um, or why this is going down take a look and read up on your book if you haven't already um, there's a way to gauge your um, your build time like how long is this gonna take you know what I mean this will take a, a, a quite a bit but you know it gives you a kind of a heads up on how long everything else will go down so um by uh by looking at the SBUs I think it's system build units I'm not sure but the system build units um for bin utils on page 49 it says it's one SBU now one SBU to me is about 10 minutes okay so it kind of gives you a gauge so you're not uh, compiling it's not you know you don't know on a lot of stuff you might not get any output and you might think your machine locked up or froze up or something and uh, if you stay true to that number and uh, you know if it goes over that number of course if it goes to six hours in or whatever and you're supposed to have a uh, you know a, a 20 minute install well you know obviously something went wrong so for this it's only 10 minutes and we're not going to sit here and look at output all the time but um, kind of touch up to where we are and how LFS runs and uh, the conventions of building this and all that good stuff okay so with that in mind I'm gonna go back over here if you followed me long enough you know that I don't have a switch and that's okay because I got other ways around it and I'm gonna stop this recording and I'll pick you up on the next one we'll see kill if anybody really wants to know what I'm doing this is what I'm doing PS Aux shows all my processes running and uh, the process ID for this number here uh, my desktop recorder is 3645 and to kill that or stop it or make like a start button that's what you gotta do 3645 see you later